Hello guys, what is going on? I'm Nozzle and welcome back to another video. So I'm just going to do a quick explainer on what this video is going to be about because I'm doing things a little bit differently on my channel now. So if you didn't know, every Wednesday I would upload like from anywhere from 4 to 8 comic reviews just on that day. And I don't even upload daily, so people's sub boxes would have nothing and instantly be flooded with all these like 4 or 5 minute videos. So I thought, why not just make it a comic roundup? You know, so that's what I'm going to do today. Um, also, I will be doing timestamps in the description. So if you want to go to a specific comic, in the description will be all the comics that will be in the video. And also the timestamp next to them. So if you just want to see a specific comic, you can go to that timestamp and then it will play from the start of the review for that comic. And finally, 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 just for future reference, not every single comic will be in the title, so you will have to check the description for every comic, just the most popular ones will be in the title. So, let's start off with the issue one of the week, a really big one, honestly, this got announced, I think in May time, I think it was May or maybe even uh, late April, that Fantastic Four was going to be coming out in August, and I got really excited, primarily because I was really enjoying the Spider-Man run at the time, um, it might have been even earlier in April anyway, I don't know. Um, I was really enjoying the Dan Slot Spider Run, uh, Spider Man run, run at the time, and when I heard that he was going to be doing Fantastic Four, I'm like, these are characters that I've never really cared about apart from certain events where they've been sort of interesting, mainly Reed Richards, to be honest. Um, and it was kind of the same thing with uh, Tony Stark, Iron Man, where I really never liked the character in the comics, and... I'd never really cared about the character, but because Dan Slott was doing it, I'm like, okay, if it's anything like the Spider-Man run, it's going to be going to be amazing. And so when the announcement like it was going to happen in August, and it's going to be Dan Slott, I was like, oh my god. So it was already high anticipation for me. But saying that, it has been a very, very long time since I've read Fantastic Four. A couple of years. I've read, uh, I've only ever read them in events. I read them in Secret Wars, Battle World, which is Secret Wars. Um, and I've read them in Civil War as well, like the spin-off comic for that. Uh, I've got the trades over there. So I've all actually read them in trade form, essentially. Um, Secret Wars I actually did read the issues for, um, but you know you know what I mean. So I've never read a solo Fanta Fantastic Four story. But, you know, I feel like I, I know the characters somewhat well. I've watched both the movies, you know. I get the char the gist of the characters. But the reason why I mention this is... It just plainly because I felt like this first issue was very, very, like, first-time reader-friendly. If I knew nothing about the characters, I would think I would know almost everything there is to know about the characters within the first issue. Especially when it comes to Ben and when it comes to Johnny. Because they're, they're just poor, they just poor personality. They, they, like, it seeps through them with every single syllable. And that's good writing. Speaking of the writing, um, plot-wise, the writing was fine. No big chances except for another wedding proposal in the comic. Hopefully this one does go through. I, can, I can't see it not doing. Um, because for some reason, people hate weddings in comics. And I don't know why, but they do. I just hope that this one pulls through because Ben's, Ben's a nice geezer, isn't he? He deserves happiness. The major, major downside of this comic, and probably this entire series, to be honest, is I mean to be fair though it, it, that's not going to be 100% the case all the time because Thor who's got a really good artist and I really love the art um is, is losing their artist so and so so the art style might change drastically I don't know but Fantastic Four for now and for the foreseeable future I really really hate the art like the cover art like makes me want to vomit honestly I'm try I don't I don't want to be too mean even though that was incredibly mean but yeah just not good in the slightest that cover was like oh my god what are these colors what is this what are these outlines it's just it's all this like meshy green sickly no 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 dan slot is pretty good at opening issues um but he's notoriously not great at the rest of it i mean like, like i said i did enjoy from 789 to uh, 801 of his Spider-Man series, and that, because that's the only thing, that's the only part of it I read. So 
you know, I mean, a lot of other people didn't like the Spider-Man teaming up stuff, and I didn't particularly like in issue 800 the fact that Spider-Man was very much a passive protagonist, but because there's already a built-in team here, um, and because, like, if someone's been a, a, pa a passive protagonist, hopefully they're not all being a passive protagonist, but if someone is, then the others can pick up the slack. Um, because it's a Fantastic Four comic, hopefully title characters are going to be the ones actually doing something, while Spider-Man is known more for being a solo uh, type of character, while he was, whilst Dan Slott was trying to create, like, a spider family, something which has been pretty much completely retconned um, in the reboot, so that's been nice. Um, but yeah... That's it for the Fantastic Four review. Overall, it's a pretty good first issue. I just really don't like the art. <laughs> Moving on to Spider-Man issue 3. Uh, I did not really enjoy it at all. Um, it was probably... the It is the first Spider-Man issue since 789. So it's been like, what, six months? More than that? So it's been like six months of Spider-Man. This is the first one where I've not been excited for the next issue. It just answered a big question, like who was this new Peter Parker? I theorized that it was going to be Superior Spider-Man, Doc Ock. Uh, it wasn't. Um, so, you know, it, like that was a bit of a shock. But like, I got it actually answered for me in the comments. Well, like it, someone else also um, theorize that it was just a clone of Spider-Man or a version of Spider-Man after the machine went off, you know? Um, which I realized after that comment was said, they're like, oh, that's like pretty likely as well. I didn't think it was more or less likely than my theory because I thought when I was making the video, I thought my theory was so certain. Yeah, but when something else was thrown into the fray, I was like, oh yeah, maybe this isn't so certain. But yeah, it answered that main question, but it didn't really pose any new ones. The standard story with no real risk, just that, just that of their re relationship, really, with uh, Mary Jane, you know, because the whole plot is going to be, um, you know, Peter trying to convince Spider-Man to return and be a part of one another. Um, as I assume, like, Spider-Man feels, like, more free because he doesn't have to deal with, like, his other life and he can just be Spider-Man. That's, like, sort of the whole point. Like, you can't have a great Spider-Man without Peter Parker and you can't have a great Peter Parker without Spider-Man. You know, that's the whole thing. They have to, The whole point is, like, because there's always questions, like, oh, if, if Spider-Man didn't bother with his family or something like that, he could be such a good hero or whatever. I'm sure some people have uttered those words in the past, but this issue is sort of to show that they're supposed to be together, which, you know, is fine, but it, it, it there's no, it no questions to be asked. That's the problem with stories sometimes when it comes to comics, is that there is no questions asked, and it's just so run the mill that, you know, you don't even have to read it, you can come back in like a few issues and nothing would surprise you. That's why Donny Case right now is such an incredible writer, because you can't, there's nothing to expect, because it's all batshit insane and i'd like that from some of the more mainstream titles but probably not gonna get that yeah but like i said first time in a long time not excited for the next issue so overall this issue wasn't great moving on to flash uh, issue 52 i was kind of disappointed that flash stuck to his old ways uh, i've said this for the past few issues now i really am starting to dislike barry allen's flash i really wish that at the end of Flash War, it was Wally who was sticking by. I know it wouldn't make sense. This is Barry's series. He is the Flash right now. We're stuck with him. So I just wish we could get some character development. And there's some character change. Because right at the beginning of the issue, what we got was we got Flash saying things are changing. And I lost my mind. I was like, oh my god, they are changing. He is changing. I'm so glad. I'm so happy. I can't wait. And then halfway through the issue, it was like, even though Co uh, Cold is a completely different person, it was like, oh, I can't trust you. How do you expect me to trust you because of what you look like? Oh, I'm affecting police work, you know? And it was just the same flash. And he was annoyed that things couldn't go back to normal. That was another thing that he uttered again, that he wanted things to go back to the way they were. It infuriates me. Just... Just, f just f change the character. Don't be afraid to change the character. Oh my god, it infuriates me. How they just stick to the same character over and over again. This annoying little speedy man. <sighs> it's, it, it is really starting to infuriate me. I just wish it were nicer to Cold. 
only because this is 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 less because of the character development and just the ability to change the character, but it was just because I feel like they would have a really cool dynamic going on. Hey, but also seriously, they'd have a really cool dynamic. And I just want to see that. But it's not going to happen. The strength force, the first, like, actual force we got an, an issue to, uh, like, to explain. Uh, well, not to explain, but just to sort of showcase. Um, it's interesting. I'm excited to see what else it has to it, apart from the whole just forcing people to hulk out. I don't know whether it'll have anything else to it or not. Who knows? I, all I know is that we got uh, six issues from 52 to 57 in order for him to focus on these forces. It's not very many issues, but that's what's been reported. So, I mean, I'd love it to go up to at least issue 60, just so we can get, like, a good amount of issues all down to um, just the forces. But I'm pretty sure it's 52 to 57, just so, just so they could fit it nicely into a trade, which is kind of sad. I w wish that he would just make a bigger trade or just not care about that. But they do make a lot of money from trades, so you got to deal with that sometimes. Something that was interesting about the Strength Force is it seemed a lot more physical. Like, it seemed very humanoid. You know when Trickster first fell in the hole, uh, it felt like it was like uh, the the Strength Force was more alive than the Speed Force. The so Speed Force feels very om om omniscient, um, you know, omnipotent, om omnipotent um, in its, like, doings. But the strength force felt very purposeful and very personal in what it was doing. I don't know whether the speed force and the strength force are the same thing. I'm not too sure. Probably not. But the strength force does feel very different in the way it deals with things. Overall, it was a good issue. Uh, interesting and pretty fast-paced. Um, just very disappointed in the Flash character. Uh, hopefully, they do try and do something different with the Flash character. Because otherwise... Why would they say that stuff is changing? You know what I mean? It feels like they were just teasing us just because they know that we're just going to keep reading and they don't have to try to make it... They have to try to make an interesting character. Moving on, finally, um, I'm not going to talk too much about Superman, so sorry if you're watching this video just for the Superman issue. Um, it's just that I expected... I don't know why. Um, I just expected... a lot more of a showreel of Superman's past. And though we got, like, some of it... It seemed too focused more on nothing, if that makes sense. Now, the inter the, what I refer to primarily, uh, the internal monologue was nice and uplifting, but it did nothing for the character or plot. You know the monologue where he was talking about, like, what, when Green Arrow asked him, like, is it hell inside your head, all, and, like, is, is you know, like dealing with the world all the time, and he talks about it, like, he went on for, like, three pages, which is quite a lot of page real estate, um, when it comes to, like, such a disastrous event, um, you know, it was just, it was just weird, also, I don't really like what they did with the Flash character in this issue, personally, they seem to make him more of, like, a edgy, quirky person, which is a bit odd. I mean, they were maybe trying to make it a bit more lighthearted, but I think they did that in the monologue. I don't know if they needed com comedic relief. And it, none of the jokes landed. It wasn't very comedic anyway, so I don't really get the whole point of the Flash in this issue, why he was even there. You know, we could have had a different uh, Justice League hero is maybe a bit more on the ball. And so, like, I just wanted it to be taken a bit more seriously, considering the entire Earth is in the Phantom Zone. I like having some flash quips when we're in the middle of battle, but when he's just talking and then fading in front of Superman. I mean, it, it probably has something to do with the source wall and stuff like that and the major stuff going on with the speed force and the other forces because he can't handle maybe being so far away um, from somewhere. I don't know. Uh, I, I Honestly, I'm just chatting shit when it comes to what I think happened to the Flash in this one. Um, but like Superman and the Flash are pretty much powered down right now. And considering it's a Superman issue, I can't see this arc lasting more than, like, four issues. Otherwise, what's Superman going to do? You know what I mean? We, they've already got the potential device in order to save people. I, I just, I, I'm interested to see, The thing that I'm mainly interested to see, which is why I loved the first issue so much, was the promise of all these different historical Superman characters and monsters and stuff like that that we get to see. Um, and so far, it feels like the one that's been chosen to focus on is the most bland person slash alien in the world. You know what I mean? 
Anyway, um, I think that's it for now. Um, just quickly on Superman again. Uh, I'm going to pick up issue three, definitely. I'm going to read issue three, um, and then I'll decide whether I'm going to continue it or not. Notoriously in the past, I have really disliked Superman and his issues. It just feels very boring. Like I, I just don't really like the character too much, to be honest. Um, it just feels too good. There isn't any edges to him at all. But yeah, that's going to be it for now, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and all good stuff. If you enjoyed this like new format, then please let me know. Um, Twitter and Patreon is in the description. If you want to know more about my Patreon and what I do on there, basically, I just I, I'm currently writing a novel and need support in order to you know make the novel and publish it and stuff like that. So if you want to see my Patreon video on there where I talk specifically about the tiers and stuff like that, then it's on the Patreon. Like I said, link will be in the description. I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye.